All right, let's try this. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Say it three times and it's supposed to appear right next to you. And well, I guess, here it is. It's about time we've discussed Beetlejuice once again because we do have some extra discoveries about this famous star and discoveries that potentially once and for all explain everything weird it's been doing in the last few years, solving one of the major mysteries in astronomy. And so in this video we're going to discuss several recent papers about Beetlejuice, talk about exactly what science has discovered, and of course discuss the mysteries and the solutions. But first, let's I guess review what happened to Beetlejuice in the last six years, and why it was even mysterious to begin with. Well, the why part is pretty easy to answer. This is one of the brightest stars in the night skies. And so if it suddenly goes through some dramatic shifts like this dip you see right here, and starts to dim in a very bizarre way like it did in 2019, almost everyone is going to talk about it, trying to figure out what's happening. And here, despite the distance of at least 550 light years away from us, because the star is so large, approximately 770 times the solar size, it's actually relatively easy to observe this star with a lot of modern telescopes. And here we do have several images in different wavelengths that show us this enormous gigantic star and even show us what happens around it in its stellar atmosphere. But then in 2019, the star went through some dramatic shifts. It experienced what scientists now refer to as the Great Dimming. The brightness suddenly dropped by a factor of three making the star much dimmer than ever before. And so there was a lot of speculations that maybe it's about to go supernova. As a matter of fact, the entire internet and all of the press started to report on this star like never before. And quite a lot of people were desperately waiting for that supernova to happen. Mostly because it would just produce something really beautiful in the night skies. Well, did it explode? No, of course not. And that's because eventually this was explained as an entirely different phenomenon. This was a gigantic stellar burp, a massive surface mass ejection of extremely hot material that as it cooled down, temporarily blocked the star in the same way that sometimes clouds block the sun. And the evidence for this was really strong. You can actually find out more about this in one of the videos in the description. With additional studies eventually establishing that this star might go supernova in the next 100,000 years, or possibly even a million years, but not much sooner. But there was still a mystery. A very critical question still remained. Why did it actually burp so much? And why did it produce this bizarre cloud? And though at first this was bizarre, eventually in the last few years, researchers observed similar phenomena around very similar stars, including the famous Antares. And so some studies suggested that maybe this is just something that happens around all of them we've just never noticed before. And so maybe this was just some kind of a long-term cycle of brightening and dimming that sometimes involves ejection of dust. And so since Betelgeuse is technically defined as an evolved red giant, it's essentially at least 8 million years old, making it a grandpa amongst these stars. It could just possess some kind of an extreme instability that may show complex variability in brightness, resulting in these bizarre burps. But not everyone agreed with this explanation, and additional observations revealed something else somewhat bizarre. By studying what I guess you would call a heartbeat of the star, or technically by using what's known as astroseismology, and detecting vibrations from within the star visible in various emissions, researchers discovered that there seemed to be at least two dominant periodic fluctuations. First, there is a relatively fast cycle, the so-called primary pulsation that's approximately 400 days long. That's actually what you kind of see as these mini dips everywhere, and that's something that many different stars possess and not unusual at all. But there was also a kind of a second, far more puzzling pulsation, or a long secondary period, that lasted for about 6 years, or 2100 days. And that one could not be easily explained because not a lot of stars seem to possess this. And so explaining this through some kind of an internal dynamics inside the star was basically kind of impossible. And so for many, many years, various theories were proposed with various suggestions and various propositions. For example, giant convection cells or some kind of a dust effect from various previous emissions. But none of this really fit the data and none of this explained this very bizarre periodicity, which eventually led to the, I guess, biggest hypothesis of them all. Maybe there is an unseen companion or some kind of a really massive planet orbiting Betelgeuse that's causing all of this every six years. With this idea officially proposed in two separate studies back in 2024. But there was a problem. And I guess you can kind of see the problem here. We don't really seem to see signs of any partners anywhere. 
Many observations of Betelgeuse have been done over the years, and none of them showed any partners. But the theoretical studies still suggest that Betelgeuse light curve, combined with periodic variations, and even radial velocity and astrometry, seem to be still best explained by a massive object orbiting around it. And so, scientists proposed that this was the so-called Alpha Orionis B. B in this case refers to the partner. But because this is the internet, it eventually became known as the Beetle Body. Beetle Body orbiting every 2100 days. With the official observations and most of the suggestions, estimating this object to be about 0.5 to maybe 2 solar masses in total, and orbiting approximately 9 astronomical units away from Betelgeuse. Distance comparable to planet Saturn. But because this star was a giant star, and because this distance was really close to the surface of the star, in some sense this companion would be almost swimming within Betelgeuse's extended atmosphere, and would also thus be kind of invisible. It would kind of sort of look like this. And so this orbiting companion model immediately offered a crucial explanation for pretty much everything. Such a companion in such a tight orbit could easily disturb some of the Betelgeuse's stellar wind, and sometimes, on some occasions, sweep away huge amounts of dust from the surface, introducing a dramatic mass loss, which would then produce these bizarre burps. And various simulations and theoretical predictions literally explain this very well, with most of this basically making sense in theory. We actually talked about this a few years back in one of the videos in the description, but this was just a theory. Anyway, so yeah, basically there was just no evidence. Without visual observations, it was very, very difficult to prove all of this. But there was also an extremely important prediction that was made that turned out to be correct. This companion should be in certain locations, such as, for example, behind Betelgeuse, during periods of minimum brightness, like the Great Dimming. But sometimes it would have a perfect position to be actually capturable by at least some telescopes. And so here the theoretical case and the predictions were strong enough for a few scientists to finally try this. And so despite the fact that Betelgeuse is extremely bright and very large in size, there was still a chance to see this companion in certain parts of its orbit. And just as a side note, here in terms of total brightness, scientists have actually compared this to trying to find a tiny firefly right next to a car's headlight. And so that's essentially the brightness comparison here and why this was so challenging. But because the researchers here were pretty convinced it should be there, they were able to time the orbit just right when the partner achieved maximum apparent separation and when it should be visible the most. This was supposed to happen around December 2024. And just as a side note, that's how ridiculously precise this particular prediction and theory was. And so in December 2024, a lot of astronomers launched the targeted observation campaigns using a lot of telescopes, trying to finally find it or at least trying to find some kind of an explanation for what's going on here. And well, it didn't take long to finally discover something. Something that was actually visible in many different images and in different wavelengths. With some of the most recent images being released by the Chandra's X-ray observatory, that was also able to tell us a little bit more about the companion just by observing the types of X-rays it was producing. And well, here's that famous image we've discussed previously a few months back that officially confirmed its existence. And it was almost definitely there, even though the image here was not particularly strong and particularly high quality, just the fact that it was exactly in the same position as predicted was a huge deal, with several additional studies from the last few months basically confirming exactly what we thought and exactly what the scientists believed about this object. But I guess more importantly, finally explaining this dip. No supernova, just a companion. But as I mentioned, one of the companions here used Chandra X-ray Observatory, one of the most powerful X-ray telescopes in existence. And here, if the companion was some kind of a compact object, for example, a white dwarf or a neutron star, both of which technically fit the predicted mass range, we would actually be seeing very specific X-rays coming from here, because this object would be accreting some of the material from Betelgeuse and thus emitting certain X-rays. But following extensive observations, nothing was actually found. And this non-detection is important for establishing what this object is. Here this almost definitively shows us that this is not an accreting compact object, not a white dwarf, not a neutron star, obviously not a black hole, and has to be some kind of a star. With a parallel campaign using Hubble Space Telescope and specifically the STIS instrument that looked at the features in the far ultraviolet, also detected in a non-detection of spectral lines which allowed scientists to place a constraint on the total mass of this object. So here it's almost certainly 
not above approximately 1.5 solar masses, because otherwise it would be producing a lot of ultraviolet light. And so right now scientists think that this is about 1.1 solar masses in total, or surprisingly, very similar to the Sun. But I guess even more surprisingly, this companion has to be a normal stellar object that's about 8 million years old, that co-evolved with Betelgeuse, and based on its mass, is possibly still just what's known as a YSO, young stellar object. Basically, a kind of a baby star that potentially doesn't even have nuclear fusion yet, and that's still growing and developing. Scientifically, this is known as the pre-main sequence star. But in a normal YSO, we usually have a lot of emissions coming through these jets, massive amounts of stellar winds, and also an incredibly large protoplanetary disk. Here though, because it's orbiting a much more massive, larger star, none of this is present. And so this is definitely a really exciting discovery. So exciting, as a matter of fact, that it now has a name. It's now referred to as Siwarha. The Arabic for her bracelet, because the word Betelgeuse is a slightly incorrect way of saying hand of the giant in the Arabic that's been unfortunately misspelled by some of the earlier scholars. The original Arabic is Yad al-Jawza, but the European translators in the 13th century misspelled YSB, making this Bad al-Jawza, which eventually got shortened to Betelgeuse. But because Steve Howell and his team have now officially confirmed the existence of this object by physically observing this with the Gemini telescope, now the next step is essentially trying to investigate exactly what this object is and what's going to happen to it once Betelgeuse goes supernova. And honestly, right now there is almost no doubt that this object really exists. Not only was it in exactly the same location where researchers predicted it to be, it has now been observed in several different wavelengths, even in some of the previous images from 2020 that were previously accidentally missed. But missed because this object is just so much dimmer, by at least 6 magnitudes in brightness. And so based on the brightness difference, right now the direct imaging data suggests a slightly higher mass estimate of maybe about 1.6 solar masses, and possibly because this object is still growing and even absorbing some of the mass from Betelgeuse itself. But the profile of the young stellar object is definitely there, a very hot pre-main sequence star that's a lot more massive and brighter than the Sun and has not yet settled into its main sequence stage. But this would be the first confirmation of such object that's not orbiting by itself with a protoplanetary disk, but instead is orbiting something that's eventually going to explode. And since previously this detection was considered to be nearly impossible, in astronomy this is a monumental discovery. Even though we've known about this star for thousands of years, it wasn't really until a few months back, in 2025, that its companion has finally been confirmed. And that means that we might see very similar dips and very similar dimming events in the future, because this object will eventually reach the same point in orbit, and might produce something similar again. And so as the star Siwarha goes through the material ejected by the red supergiant, it may occasionally clear up a lot of mass all at once, producing these very strange, very powerful emissions, with lots of dust leaving all at once and eventually blocking the star. But there is also a new mystery, a mystery in regards to its formation. Right now this kind of challenges the idea behind binary star formation models, because typically binary stars will usually have very similar masses. We don't really see a lot of stars with such a huge mass discrepancy. Yet the observation here implies that the mass ratio is at least 16 to 1, a really massive main star and a very tiny companion, which makes this possibly the first such object discovered, the first extreme mass ratio binary that's not been confirmed, which means that they probably exist all over the place, and which also means that maybe other stars, including Antares, that has actually gone through very similar dimming events, possibly has its own partner too. But since this is just the beginning of this exploration, right now we don't really have any answers. But at the same time, this companion also solves a really old mystery about Betelgeuse's rotation. Betelgeuse spins a little bit faster than it should. And previously this was believed to be the result of some kind of a merger. We've discussed this in one of the videos in the description. But the existence of this companion suggests that the rotation is maybe induced through some kind of a tidal interaction, as the object orbits around the star and as it pulls on it in the same way that the moon pulls on Earth and changes the rotation of planet Earth as well. And so right now this object surprisingly solves quite a lot of different mysteries. But I guess, so what about its future? 
Well, at the moment, based on the simulations and the predictions, because the star, as it orbits around Betelgeuse, seems to actually interact with its gas, there's a very high chance it's on a kind of a spiraling inward orbit. Or basically, it's slowly approaching Betelgeuse closer and closer. And that means that maybe in the next 10,000 years, even before Betelgeuse explodes, it may fall into it, combining in the process, which possibly might even cause the Betelgeuse to go supernova just a little bit earlier. Or it may survive and get kicked out of the system, becoming its own star in the process. Alternatively, as Betelgeuse becomes some kind of a neutron star, it may basically create a typical binary that might eventually even become an X-ray binary, many of which we've seen in the past. But right now, the future of the star and its companion is not truly known. Either way though, the entire process of discovery of this object is a tremendous success for astronomy. Going from a very anomalous observation in 2019 to a potential prediction of an object in orbit to the eventual confirmation of its existence is absolutely incredible. But more importantly, we should be able to see this again, sometimes in late November 2027, when Siwarha is predicted to reach its maximum elongation and become even more visible, thus allowing astronomers to learn more about it and discover its true nature. And so until 2027, we're unlikely to learn more about this object, but we may still talk about Betelgeuse if there are some other explanations or additional propositions. And so once we learn something else, we'll definitely come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon, where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can DM me directly, or by joining channel membership that grants you early access and a few more videos. You can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.